You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Sponsored in part by Warp Zone Video Games and Beyond. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Like a one-winged angel descending from the heavens, it's Nerd Overload, your pop and geek culture show. I'm Cody. I'm Sam. I'm Josh. And I'm Samantha. And that was a Final Fantasy VII reference yeah. that no one got. <laughs> uh, we have a great show for you this week. Thank you all for tuning in. We have a, a, a good amount of news, I'd say, uh, including uh, a discussion about the Power Rangers movie trailer. I'm excited about oh, that. It's going to get heated up in here. Oh, man. But uh, first, let's get into some things we've been checking out. I'll oh, go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, I really, the only thing I, I checked out beyond like the normal, I did get caught up on Zorn. Uh, we've talked about it the last three weeks, so yeah. <laughs> I'm probably going to skip that. But uh, what, what, what'd uh, you think? I like it. Okay. I like cool. it a lot. I, I agree with a lot of what you guys said about it being like a, just a really good sitcom that just <laughs> happens to have a cartoon character. <laughs> a cartoon man. <laughs> I really liked uh, Tim Robbins. Or Tim Meadows, yeah. not Tim Robbins. Tim Meadows' character. <laughs> yeah, he's funny. He's really funny. And you could tell that there is some real pent up like like <laughs> anger. Yeah, one day he's gonna lose. He is it. just gonna <laughs> snap and it's gonna be it's gonna be great. It'll probably be the focus of an episode is that Tim Meadows is just gonna is broken. <laughs> is just gonna break at some point. Uh but I enjoy it. I like it a lot. I'm gonna definitely keep up with it. Uh the other thing I checked out, um there's a game, Stardew Valley. It's on Steam. It's a farming simulator. Yeah, we've talked about it before. We have. It's it's a it's a cute, fun little game. Uh, a game that I um, accidentally completed about six <laughs> months ago. And there's a lot. <laughs> I kind of got hooked on it for a week and just got all of the achievos. It's and what it does. It, everything. it pulls you in and it will not let go. <laughs> it does, yes. And they, uh, they released their first major update. Uh, added a bunch of new features and a new area and a bunch of different stuff. And... Uh, I sat for about an hour and a half and got myself caught back up and <laughs> and and max it out again. But it's fun. It's cool. Uh definitely worth the money without getting too deep into like the boring stuff. I like the additions that they made. I like being able to move buildings around without having to tear them down and rebuild them. That's a good feature. I like some of the stuff the the new social interactions with the uh townsfolk that that are uh, mature and adult. Yes, yes. Um, In like a legitimate way. I'm not saying adult, like, you know, No, adult. yeah, no, I know, uh, yeah. But uh, but no, they're actually, uh, this update gets a little dark at some points. They added divorce for one thing, and they added, um, one of the thing, one of the parts of the game is you can uh, have uh, romantic partners in it. And uh, they added different basic, like, storylines for the, for the new ones. And they added two new characters to that. Uh, one of them... Uh, is basically just Phoebe from Friends, like the 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 kind of or Dharma from Dharma and Greg, <laughs> that kind of character. Uh, the other one, uh, you help the character through alcoholism and uh, an attempted suicide attempt. This is a game for children, <laughs> <laughs> and they put all this kind of deep dark kind it's of not necessarily stuff. for children. Not necessarily, but if you look at the 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 sprite style and a lot of the gameplay. It looks like it looks like yeah. it, it's a game for for baby kids. Well, it looks like Harvest Moon, which is a very much an all ages. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, you scratch the surface, and there are some like kind of deep, deeper stuff themes, some mature going themes on. Yeah, but uh, handled in a mature way. Yeah, but uh, you know, I didn't focus on that too much. I just went in and got those extra chivos and <laughs> and got back out before I got sucked in. But uh, but it was fun. It's cool. Um, if you have the game. You know, definitely get the update. And if you don't have the game, it's like 15 bucks, right? It's not. Yeah. Call them achievements. Yeah, the, the update's free, too. Yeah, the update is free, and that that is nice. So, um, yeah. Which is cool, because they could they could charge for it. I mean. They really could. Really they could have added it as a DLC pack. Well, I think, eventually, I think that's what they're going to do. But for now, <laughs> yeah. They still haven't added in uh, multiplayer, which I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah. That's... I really don't think it's going to work modders have already modded it in well i don't know how that works either yeah i don't eh. yeah i don't think it needs it it's it, not that kind of game I don't it's think. not it's really not it's a very solitary experience mm -hmm. yeah but that's it that's all i've really done well, I had dragon quest but that's <laughs> again we've talked about that a million times yeah. so um i played some newer 3ds games i guess i could talk about the the new sonic uh for 3ds sonic and 
Sonic Boom Fire and Ice, I think. I don't okay, know. yeah. It sounds real bad because Sonic, it's Sonic Boom, Boom. Yeah, which I've heard is not a bad show. The the show's really funny. The show's really good. It's it's definitely for kids, but it's um the characterization of of Sonic and Pals are pretty on point. Yeah, the cutscenes of the game have been pretty, you know, fairly entertaining. Yeah, nothing and, like laugh out loud, but yeah, chuckle sh- worthy. Yeah, and in the show, um, Egg uh, Robotnik or Egghead Eggman is uh, a lot less of like an antagonist and more just like that annoying neighbor that just kind of <laughs> gets ticked off at everything you do. I I love Eggman. He's my favorite of all the Sonic characters. Oh, like, yeah. He's the Wario of the Sonic universe. They've like, kind of turned him into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, this game, it's actually good. It's not like the other Sonic Boom games that were terrible. Oh, garbage. Yeah. Like, it actually kind of feels like a Sonic game. You get moving fast. Uh, you can actually make lines through the levels to get through them faster. Kind of, kind of like Donkey Kong Country, where there's always, like, lines you can go through to... To go through them faster. Sure, I don't know how to... like the alternate route. Not alternate routes, just like there's ways you can do each area to do it f- faster. Mm-hmm. Like you can line up, the, jump off these two guys, and then homing into this guy. Oh, and okay. it's obvious that the designers set this up for you to combo through it. To kind of speed run kind yeah. of a little bit. That's cool. And I think that's important for a Sonic game. It's weird that there's a run button. Oh, really? Yeah, which is not the first Sonic game to have a run button. That Lost World has a run button, too. Mm-hmm. It seems weird, though, because, like... He's it Sonic be a, the Hedgehog. Yeah, it should be a given that you want to run. You shouldn't have to push a button. <laughs> He's got to go fast. Yeah. Um, the fire and ice mechanic is, is kind of clever. You get, you always have either a fire aura or an ice aura around you, and you hit a button to switch it. And okay. there's, like, water and ice blocks around the level, and if you're fire, you'll melt the ice. If you're water, you'll freeze it so you can go across platforms or through walls. Okay. Now, do you turn into a knight or possibly a werewolf in this one? No. Okay, good. <laughs> a, a true sign of a good Sonic game is when you are a knight or a werewolf. <laughs> or have a gun. Yeah. Or it's... date a human woman. <laughs> none, of that, none of that crap here. I mean, it does have, it does have all his pals. But yeah. you can switch them on the fly. Oh, that's good. So you, so they don't try to well, sandwich a bunch of different gameplay styles into the same levels like a Sonic Adventure game does. Okay, well, they, you could switch on the fly in uh, the first Sonic Boom for the, really? for the Wii. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't and, play that game because I heard how bad it was. Oh, it's bad. It's real bad. <laughs> in fact, there's a, uh, um, a guy called The Completionist online um, on YouTube that just uh, completed or got 99% of the, that Sonic Boom game including having to complete the 3DS game because there is a, an unlock in the Wii game that you have to complete the 3DS oh game to get. He couldn't complete the game because the game bugged out on one level and would not let him complete and get the star on the level oh, no. for the ex- expert mode. Like, he could not get it. So he, it's like, it's never going to happen. He did it like 15 times. He actually showed it on his video. That's got to be the most maddening thing. Oh, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um... Yeah, no, but you can switch again. You can switch on on the fly with the with those characters, but it created like alternate paths through the level. Yeah, that's what this game yeah. does. Everybody has a different skill they can use. Yeah, like Tails has a laser gun. Okay, and Amy has a hammer, and it's, Knuckles is dumb. Yeah, <laughs> he can dig holes, and oh. uh, it kind of controls like you go to four directional control when you're down in, in underground, mm-hmm. and if you dig in a circle. It creates an explosion in the middle of the circle. So if you draw a circle around a bad guy, you kill it, which oh, is kind of cool. That is kind of cool. It's a cool mechanic. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a bad game. I mean, it's not an amazing game. The environments are really bland looking. Like, mm-hmm. if you put any other character in that same environment, I wouldn't know the difference. Like, it doesn't look like Sonic. Yeah. But I guess because it's supposed to look like the cartoon. Yeah. Well, I'm, when was the last time a Sonic game actually looked like Sonic? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, uh, well, I guess, other than Sonic Mania, that's going to be coming out soonish, like right? Next year. Next year, sometime. yeah. That looks like a Sonic game, but at nothing uh, really. Generations had some levels that. I guess. <laughs> I guess the classic but... Sonic levels. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a decent Sonic game. If you're looking for a Sonic game to play, if that's if for some reason that if that's what, you what want, you're into, <laughs> you, you could do a lot worse than this. Oh, okay. Um, if, ringing endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> You can... I mean, if you're looking for a platform game you haven't already gone all the way through, you could do a lot worse than this. Okay. Um, oh, the new Five Nights at Freddy's game came out. Oh, yeah. Is it? Uh, is it scary? It is very scary. It's, 
it's actually legitimately creepy. Like, it's it's on a whole other level, I think, than any of the other games. It seems like it might be more about, like, the tension instead of the actual jump scares. Oh, uh, okay. Which is a nice, uh, I don't know. Change. You, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of a fancier word, but... <laughs> Um, you actually like move around from rooms to rooms a lot. It's a lot more guided. There's a there's voices telling you what to do. Okay, like a computer voice, uh, and it actually has legit voice acting. Like he paid some people to. Oh, okay, to do so voice it's not acting. just that one guy on the on the speakerphone. Yeah, which wh- was that him? I, I I think so. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but it seems like you put a lot more time and effort into this one. Oh, yeah. good. It's I mean three. I didn't. Or was it four? What was the I last don't one? Know. I don't even remember how many there were, but it's a lot better than the last one, which I did not like. Yeah. Is it better than that RPG he tried to make? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot better than that RPG. <laughs> <laughs> but you're you're doing different there's all kinds of different tasks that you do. It mm-hmm. changes up gameplay. There was one point where you have to walk through one of the rooms where there's this ballerina not animatronic. Walk, crawl. No, you walk at that part. Or are you crawling? It doesn't matter. You're crawling because remember she's up high. Oh, yeah. I thought she was just really big. No, you're crawling. Oh, you must be crawling on the floor. Uh, but you're crawling through this room, and every time you hear the ballerina's music start playing, you have to stop because she her vision is based on movement. Oh. And it's a really cool, tense moment. Like, you're literally, you're moving through this room, and then you'll hear the music, and you'll stop, and maybe sometimes you'll see her go by in front of you, and like... Interesting. Like, please don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> But it, I mean, it's kind of funny, too. There's a couple good jokes in there. There's a part where they're like, please enter your name. And this little console comes up and the keyboard's all glitched like, out. Like flickering. And you try to type into it and you really can't. And then the computer's like, uh, you seem to be having problems with the interface. I see what you were trying to type. I'll help you. Eggs Benedict. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so your name gets put in as Eggs Benedict. <laughs> That's awesome. It's like he took like the good parts of portal and like kind of mashed it in oh, okay that's cool that's good but yeah if, if you've been a fan of the of the series definitely check this out um and if even if you haven't like it might even be a good starting point okay cool i another 3ds game that just came out uh river city tokyo rumble mm-hmm. i played that it's like it's a sequel to uh, river city ransom kind of okay but it takes more from what that game was originally based on, the Japanese Kunio Kun uh, Niketsu High School series. Sure, okay. I don't know, this is going way too deep. Maybe it's not worth talking about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good beat up for 3DS. Okay, and, that's good. Uh, it has regular backgrounds, but it has the same pixel art as River City Ransom does, which has those really iconic-looking uh, cute pixel characters. Mm-hmm. But it's it's worth checking out if you like games about punching dudes. Cool. <laughs> Sounds who, good. Who doesn't? Yeah, being a, a Japanese street hoodlum. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Um I checked out the the Overwatch Halloween event. Oh, I did too. And uh it's not bad. The little uh siege horde mode's not uh, is kinda cool for the Oh, I thought it was great. I loved it. I only did one round, but I loved it. Oh yeah, I did one round too. Uh who'd you play? Soldier 76. Hey, so did I. Because it's really, easy. I really like Soldier 76. He's become one of my favorites. He's a really easy character to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he runs faster. He's got a sh- he's got a machine gun. And, and he can heal. Yeah, he can heal. And if you use your ultimate, you can't miss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> your reticle goes from being tiny to being the whole screen. Nice. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to when I try to play it as either like... Anna or like McCree because I am garbage with both those characters. I'm not, not so bad with McCree. Oh, I'm not good. I'm not good at all. Uh, but this this new mode, it's it's uh, mm. Junkenstein's Revenge, and Junkrat is all dressed like a mad scientist, and you're in a castle courtyard. You got to protect the castle door from all these computer controlled zombie robots. Oh, okay. So it's actually like a player versus enemy type thing where you group with online players to fight the a computer yeah the, instead okay. of instead of just all shooting each other and PvP, capturing the it's, point yeah interesting okay that sounds uh that sounds, sounds like a, fun and there's like a fun. narrator telling a story as you're yeah as you go as like a like a bad like horror movie oh cool yeah, like a 30s black and white horror movie because it starts when you're picking your character everything it's in black and white 
and then you start playing and it color it fills in the color. It's that's really cool. cool effect. That's cool. Is that how people are winning those Halloween costumes or whatever? Yeah, yeah. The, the loot boxes for this month, instead of being regular loot boxes, are uh, pumpkins full of candy that open up to Halloween-themed items. Okay, cool. Yep, 12 new costumes. Though some of the costumes are kind of meh. Yeah. Like Symmetra's. Like vampire. Like yeah, now, it's... now I'm wearing red and my skin's white. <laughs> yeah, it's not very good. Um, Bastion's isn't that great. He's yeah. just gray and says R.I.P. on his chest. Oh. Some of the other costumes are pretty good. Like Anna's costume is really good. Reaper's costume is yeah, really cool. Reaper gets a headless horseman pumpkin. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty cool. Mercy's witch is fantastic. Oh, I know, right? It's <laughs> yeah. the best. I think I've seen that one. It's it's really, really good. Roadhog is Frankenstein, Frankenstein. basically. It's a great Frankenstein, too. Yeah. and He's, uh, he's Junkenstein's monster. I've heard, a lot of, <laughs> I've heard a lot of people talk about how Junkrat and his mad scientist looks like Rick from Rick and Morty. Yeah, he, oh my god, he does. Doesn't he have blue hair, too? Yeah, he's got white hair. Oh, I thought it was kind of blue. Is it blue blue and then into white? I don't know. It's, it's, that it's... that might be because he go, regularly it's orange into gray. Yeah. Okay. But he does look like Rick. <laughs> <laughs> he does look like Rick. I like the May um, victory animation with where the little snowball robot is a ghost and it scares her. Oh, yeah. That one's she pretty... freezes into ice and falls over. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty adorable. There's a lot of good stuff in this one. I, I, I would say this is a way better event than the Summer Games one they had. Yeah. Though Lucio Ball was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Lucio Ball was great. I love these. Whenever Overwatch does an event, I get excited and I actually go back and play the game again. <laughs> it's the only a second event they've really done. Yeah. I wanted Summer Games Tracer so bad, but I never got it. Oh, I know, right? She was real cute. <laughs> um, I, I did that and that was a lot of fun. I'll probably end up doing that again when I go home. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> um... Let's see here. I watched the Warcraft movie. Oh, how How's was that? that? Um, it's not bad. <laughs> okay, I'll explain. Being a fan of the Warcraft series, like I am, and lore, and the lore, it's not bad. It's a little weird because there's a lot of CG in this movie. Sure. I mean, I a, can believe it. A yeah. lot. Like it's. I'm pretty sure they just filmed the entire thing on green screen, like like the original, like like or like the like the prequel trilogy for Star Wars. It's like Sky Captain in the world of Warcraft. <laughs> um, there's a lot of neat things. Uh, seeing a lot of like the locales from like the, the from the from the series and stuff, like in a big movie interpretation. Like Stormwind looks like it does. It's uh, kind of in in World of Warcraft, but bigger. The or like all the non-human characters look look like they should. Because they're the ones that are really, really hugely CG'd. But all the humans running around in their uh, their big Blizzard-style armor look really kind of dopey. I can see that. I can see that not working. Yeah. Because every... they all look plastic, and they're all, like, really huge shoulders and yeah, stuff. Yeah, every screenshot I've seen of it, they look like Lord of the Rings cosplayers <laughs> a little bit. Not even Lord of the Rings. Like They, they look all like a Warhammer cosplayers. Yeah, that too. It's, well, you could say from the beginning, I Warcraft know. has always been a cosplay of of Warhammer. Warhammer. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> I was saddened by the by the very little representation of Murlocs. You'd think they would have one. They do. Okay. For like two seconds. <laughs> That's all you get. Um, the the main guy in it, um, who plays Lothar, he is of also the hill in, people, huh? Of the hill people. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Is Thrall in it? As a baby. Oh. Like I said, this takes place for, like, the original game. Oh. Yeah, this is pretty much the story of the original game with some added stuff. The The main guy, he is also the main dude from Vikings. He plays Ragnar uh, Lothbrook in the, the History Channel Viking show. That dude has no range because he's essentially <laughs> the same character. Like, he has, like, a lot of the same mannerisms and, like, the way he talks. And I'm just like, ugh. Instead of having a mohawk, now you've got this long, weird wig on your head. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's not bad. Uh, it's kind of graphic, too. Like, some of the fights, like when orcs start crushing on humans, it gets a bit mutt. Like, not, not so much much, but it's gorier than I thought it would be. The original Warcraft was pretty gory for its time. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, there was a, a bit of blood when you get smatter, yeah. smashed and stuff. Way, way more gory than World of Warcraft is because it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... It, it... It's not a terrible movie, but it's not a great movie either. I mean, watch it if, you, if you're if you a fan, I guess. Okay. Yeah, that's what I figured, that it was probably just like pretty middle of the road. Yeah. Was there any reason why they had to get 
Duncan Jones, the guy who made the movie Moon, which is excellent to do this movie. <laughs> does, does He also wrote it. He he wrote this movie as yeah, well? Yeah, he also wrote it. Okay, well then that that helps a little bit, but was there any like visual like visually interesting like camera work or anything like that that would necessitate getting a a pretty decent director to do this CG CG fest? I mean, there were some interesting shots, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a really cool scene when the orcs first go through the portal coming into the human world mm-hmm. from theirs. It was really neat, kind of a Stargate-y esque kind of thing. Are you talking Stargate the show or Stargate the movie? The movie. The movie. Okay, because I like the movie. Like when they first go through the. I'm one of the only people that likes <laughs> Stargate the movie. I love Stargate the movie. Well, there you go. Yeah, you, you found the other person. I found the other <laughs> the other person that enjoyed that movie. <laughs> but no, like I said, it's an okay movie. Uh, I guess it's it's. I don't think it's winning any any awards or anything. No, God, no. <laughs> For uh, best movie based on Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the funniest, like the watching the gag reels, are kind of funny. Uh, you know, it sounds like it could be the best video game movie. That's kind of what I'm getting as well. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I mean, it's probably way truer than the source material than any other video game movie I've seen. Oh, come on now, the Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> Dead to me. Dead air. Yeah, I'm leaving all that dead air in too. <laughs> I love the Mario Brothers movie. It's so bad, it's great. Yeah, it's so bad and so far off from the source material that it comes around to being like a cheesy yeah. good time. Yeah, oh God, so so cheesy. Uh God, jump boots. Uh, yeah, mushroom slime goo mushroom. Uh, bombs. Yeah, the three box. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. The uh, the Goombas that look nothing like Goombas. Oh, God. Where did they even get that? Who looked at a Goomba and said, okay, uh, big guy, tiny head? <laughs> <laughs> um, Yoshi was a leftover from the Jurassic Park Velociraptors. Yeah. yeah. Everything was just, oh, God. Everything was so bad about that movie. <laughs> Princess Peach wasn't in it. It was Daisy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luigi didn't have a mustache. And nope. was John Leguizamo. Was John Leguizamo. <laughs> <laughs> name, Mario. Last name, Mario. <laughs> so your name's Mario Mario? Yeah. What's your name? Luigi. Last name? Mario. So you're Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Yep. The Mario <laughs> Brothers. Yeah. I always thought that their last name should have been Jumpman. Yeah. Because in, his Japanese name was Jumpman. In, well, Donkey Kong, it was Jumpman. Yeah. yeah. Not just Japanese, just like in Donkey Kong, that was his yeah. name yeah. before they named him. Do you have, I also have a theory that Jumpman in Donkey Kong is Mario and Luigi's dad. It would that, make sense. That Jumpman and Paula, Paulina, is that? Uh, Pauline. Pauline are Mario and Luigi's parents. That would explain why the Donkey Kong, the Cranky Kong in Donkey Kong Country is the original, the original Donkey, Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. Uh, yeah. And why Mario, uh, Jumpman's co- uh, costume is uh, reverse colors in Donkey Kong. Yeah. I have, uh, a, I have an extensive headcanon. About this. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But also in the original Mario, the colors are a little different, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's like brown and red and kind of weird. Yeah. And yeah. then in Mario 2, he's got red overalls and a blue shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure a lot of people don't count Mario Mario 2. <laughs> <laughs> We're going way deep into Mario. We yeah. are. I could talk about my theory that, that uh, Bowser Jr. is just a time-displaced Bowser. That makes sense. It kind of makes sense. Because if you play Yoshi's New Island, Mm -hmm. um, Mario, adult Mario, is secretly helping Yoshi and baby Mario through the game unexplainedly. They don't explain why he's there, how he got there. So I'm like, well, if Mario is traveling through time, then Bowser probably pulled himself as a child through time to be his son in the modern day Make, games. Makes about as much sense as anything else. <laughs> sure, okay. That's... Or maybe they're just games. Yeah. <laughs> and well, there's a time machine in Mario and Luigi um, uh, Partners in Time. Yeah. Uh, EGAD builds a time machine. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. That's probably how it happened. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. There's some deep, uh, deep Mario theory, theory yeah. drafting here. And then they made that Mario and Luigi game where they get eaten by Bar- Bowser. Bowser, yeah. Oh. <laughs> the Vore game. <laughs> That game is actually great. That's, that's what my, I hear. That's my favorite Mario and Luigi game. That's that what I one. hear. Although I, I like uh, uh, Dream, the Dream one. Where that's they go Dream into, Game too. Yeah. Dream yeah. Team. Dream Sleepy team. Luigi going mm-hmm. to Luigi's Dreams. Yeah, yeah, I like that one a lot. Oh, I've been reading this webcomic. Okay. Uh, it's on Webtoons. Okay. Line Webtoon. Yep. Uh, it's called Newman. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew you guys were going to do that. Uh, but it's a... Uh, 
it's a fantasy D and D s world, but modern. Okay. Like there's smartphones and TVs and cars and stuff. But uh, it's not bad. It's about this this guy, this gnome named Newman, and his drow partner girlfriend. They basically work for this creature disposal service or whatever. They get called in to fight monsters and stuff. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. It's really cool. Uh, it's really the art style is amazing, mm-hmm. and I really recommend it. Very cool. That's pretty much it. Sounds really. good. All right. Well, hey, let's go ahead and take a break here, and when we get back, we'll talk about some news. Nerd Overload is sponsored in part by Warp Zone, video games and beyond. Warp Zone is the place for all your gaming needs, like modern, vintage, and import video games, as well as gaming collectibles. Warp Zone, video games and beyond is located at 4496 Cemetery Road in Hilliard, 614-219-1997, and Warp Zone on Facebook. We're back. That was I.I.I. from the band Power Jet. That was off of the Power Rangers, the movie soundtrack. I.I.I. We're not sure if that is even a real band. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was just a bunch of studio musicians that they just slapped a name onto. To to sound cool. Yeah, but uh, (laughs) yeah. Cool, I guess, in question marks. Cool to the kids. 90s cool. 90s cool. There you go. Uh, Let me tell you what wasn't 90s cool. The trailer for the new Power Rangers movie dropped uh, late last week, and we have opinions. <laughs> All of which are negative. <laughs> Most, mostly negative. There are a few positives. I will, I will give some credit where credit's due. I'm going to be honest. I didn't care for this trailer. <laughs> there are a lot of people who did. This is a lot of, for a lot of people, what... this is what exactly what they wanted out of gritty, hard reboot of Power Rangers. Of goofy children's show. Well, because nothing can be fun. Yeah. Nothing can be fun. And, uh, okay, let's go with the positives first because we can get through those real quick. Um, I I like that they used a little bit, they alluded to the Power Rangers theme song during the trailer. Yes. Yeah. The bum, 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 bum. That was, yeah. that was good. Yeah, but then it turned into an awful cover of Johnny I Cash? walk uh, of walk the line, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is you know a song about having d- doing things because you have to, not because you want to. <laughs> well, that's responsibility yeah. you know, and it, of and, the power. And it was like the saddest, slowest like rendition of that yeah. song. It was like um, that Gary Jules cover of Mad World, but walk the line. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, let's see some of the other things I liked from the trailer. I liked. A little bit of what they did with Billy. He seemed like the only one that had any kind of personality outside of pretty teen. <laughs> yeah. And troubled youth. And troubled troubled youth. youth. Well, we're going to get to yeah. that. But he at least had uh, a little bit of personality um, and was is clearly going to be kind of the comic relief a little bit of the team, if you can call him that. Uh, although um, the shorthand... If there is any comedy. If there is any comedy, yeah. the It's... Although it's clear that the that they're using autistic or OCD as a shorthand for super smart with yeah, him, which is which is really lazy. Yeah, it's incredibly lazy. It's, it's bad a, writing. It's it's so lazy that they didn't even do that on the original Power Rangers, where there was lazy writing all over the place. <laughs> it, it, it was like it was written by children. Yeah, which was kind of the point. With, I mean, it's for children. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I. I wish I could say that I enjoyed the bits, the the two seconds with Elizabeth Banks. She I, seems actually somewhat threatening. She seems threatening. I don't like the read of voice. No. I don't it's, like... It's not the read of voice. It's not the read of voice. I don't like how... Why, why, is she, why was she menacing Becky G in that one scene? <laughs> just like floating over top of her going, I've killed rangers before. It's, uh, but I, I at least your voice was closer to the to actual, the actual read of voice. voice. Yeah, <laughs> see, I can't, I can't even, uh, yeah, because it just sounded like Mad Elizabeth Banks. It did, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm glad to see the the actor who played Roy from The Office is still getting work. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. So <laughs> that's like the positives. Do you guys have any other positives? Do you uh... think? Um, they're, they're definitely teens like the show more or less. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Although I'm pretty sure that a couple of the actors were like in their twenties bulks in it. Yeah. There is a bulk. At least I'm assuming it's a bulk because it is a slightly chubby bully <laughs> with long hair. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
I didn't, I didn't really put the two and two guys. I was too more. I was too mortified. Well, there was no skull with him. Mm. So, okay. So let's get into some actual bits of this thing that weren't super great. And I should preface this by saying I've been, it's been very clear what my opinion of this, of this project is from the beginning. I don't think power Rangers works as a gritty and dark. It, do, it doesn't work. The no. whole, the whole point of power Rangers was, it was kind of hokey and kind of goofy and campy. It was something for the kids and for the older kids can look at and go, eh, that's kind of dumb, it, but fun, but fun, <laughs> dumb, but fun. That is power Rangers. So that's why I enjoy power Rangers. I don't know. It's I've somehow become kind of the preeminent power Rangerologist of Marion County. Somehow <laughs> it's not something that I've wanted to become, but it's, it's happened. <laughs> you didn't choose to have I, this power. I didn't choose this life. <laughs> the Ranger the, life. The Ranger you. life chose, chose me. That's right. With great response, with great Ranger knowledge comes great responsibility. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, but I can, I am not so deluded as to not fully admit that this, that power Rangers is dumb. <laughs> it's supposed to be dumb. Yeah. It's supposed to be dumb, fun. Everyone's supposed to... The whole point is the kids are all super positive and positivity beats negativity. And what we got were a bunch of delinquents and Sunday and Saturday school for like breaking the law and maybe killing someone. (laughs) (sighs) Yeah, like Jason's dad basically talking about how he's a disappointment because he wrecked the car. Yeah, because angst. Which uh, he wrecked the car in a way that maybe he ran over somebody. I don't know. It looked like was, it rolled. He was probably drunk. He was he was more more than likely drunk. It looked like he rolled the car because it was all crunched on top. Yeah. Uh, does anyone remember Zach from this trailer? No. He was the Can Asian I, one. Yeah, I saw him. Yeah. He did. He say anything? Nope. No. He <laughs> might as well have not even been there. There was one scene where he. I'm pretty sure he was sitting on the roof of a building smoking. That's it. <laughs> And That's when all I it think is. Power Rangers. I think smoking teens. Smoking teens because they have attitude. Oh, I think he was like leaving like his house too. Like oh, that he was having an argument. I don't even well, talk about arguing it. with his parents like Power Rangers. Like Power do. Rangers do. Um, or the fact that like the che- the cheerleader squad going all mean girl on on Kimberly. Yeah, but it's okay because she she decided to rebuke the pow- the the cheerleaders by cutting off all her hair. Oh. Uh, uh, so hard, so what gritty. A, what a cool trope that's never been done before. What a rebel. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, real, she's so hard. She's a real Walter White. She, yeah. <laughs> you, know who right. a, you know who a real Walter White is? Zordon. Zordon, in this case. That's, uh, who we but, didn't even see. Okay, so, um, yeah, we didn't see that. Uh, Zordon did not give them the powers. They stole the powers out, off of, of, a of, rock a, out of a rock wall in some, like, quarry maybe <laughs> some vaguely southwestern maybe maybe, yeah. maybe it's an alien crash site probably uh, probably yeah <sighs> those power coin things look dumb they look they're geode yeah one things. they're geodes and two they gave them superpowers yeah the rangers have superpowers that's the biggest problem of their outside of their suits yeah yeah if they have superpowers when they're not wearing a suit then why would they morph why would they the wear the suit, suit? It, well for protection but also <laughs> But going they have back, superpowers. they don't need the protection. going back when the Power Rangers did get the morphers in the original show. They the ones who didn't already know how to fight kind of did gain fighting ability. Not really, Billy did. I always assumed they just learned it from uh, the Red Ranger. Yeah, I kind of assumed that as well because Billy was taking kung fu classes. And if you notice, uh, some of the fights, a lot of the early fight scenes, is him kind of being goofy. They did learn get knowledge of how to pilot the Zords. That, but that was because they were wearing their helmets, and that gave them the power. That gave them the muscles and the power. <laughs> and then you get the woman. And they get, well, that's a reference to, to Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. Jason. <laughs> oh, Jason, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, no, Jason goes bad, and he starts beating on uh, uh, Tommy. And at one point, he's choking him out and saying, now I have the muscles and the power. <laughs> yeah, which is like a great line. I love that line. Uh, okay, so um, the trailer was devoid of color. Pretty oh much. yeah, in yeah. A, in something based on a show about bright primary colors, yeah, yeah, in bright primary color outfits. We just barely got a taste of the suits. Just, just, yeah, a ten, like it just starts touch, coming just on, and it's like, oh, that's it. The yeah. more I look at them, the more pretty much all the helmets look the same. They do. 
Sure. Like, there's no distinguishing, this is the T-Rex, and this is the saber tooth tiger. In no universe are they going to wear those helmets for more than five consecutive minutes in the, sh- in the <laughs> movie, because we've already seen where the, the visors slide up and the face mask opens up, because you have a cast full of pretty 20-somethings. Yeah, you gotta be able to look at Becky G. Yeah. Which, I still have a problem with the female suits. I don't understand why they need to be sexualized as much as they did. Becky G was 17 when they filmed that movie. Come on, guys. That was weird. With the that's, heels. That's weird. And no, I'm not worried about the heels so much, but the boob, boob plates. plates. Yeah, that's she was just She was stupid. an underage kid when they filmed all that. Why are they? Why? Come on. Come on, guys. Hollywood. But, yeah. And a lot of the dialogue seemed like a bunch of old people sitting in a room writing scripts about how they think kids talk. young kids talk. <laughs> oh, also, can we talk about the the scene where it basically seems like uh, uh, Kimberly and Jason are hooking up? Yeah, I don't care. Oh yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that was definitely something. That, that was happened. something. You know what? I'm not worried about that because I have a feeling that is going to be a uh, B plot to the second movie when they introduce Tommy because that's a hundred percent what they're gonna do. Oh yeah, like the the do villain you, for the second movie is gonna think, be an you, evil ranger. Do you think it'll be like an after credit scene? I a hundred percent do. I yeah. ha- I making my prediction now after credit scene. Rita's been beaten down, it, wh- whether she's been killed off or is just gone, and her staff is just laying on the ground. And you see someone, you don't see their face, you just see the back of their leg, and like the back of them reach down and pull the center piece out of the po- of Rita's staff because that is very clearly the green power coin thing <laughs> in the middle of her staff, and then it'll cut to black because they won't show their face because they haven't cast anyone for Tommy yet. But that's going to be how they introduce Tommy, and it'll and it won't be Jason David Frank. No, he's too busy being, being a um, bloodshot in the uh, Valiant Comics YouTube series <laughs> Ninjack. Wow. Yeah, that's the thing that's happening. Have I showed you that picture? No. Okay, give me two seconds. Internet device activated. I think it's hilarious that they they didn't give him a role in this movie at all when he was so sure he was going to be in it. <laughs> oh, can I also can I talk about how much I hate that picture of uh, the Saban brands right at the beginning of the trailer? Oh yeah, that's <laughs> awful. Ugh. They didn't even use the old logo, the no. good logo. Huh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bloodshot's kind of a weird character. Yeah. He looks like Reaper. Yeah, kinda, a little bit. Kind of yeah. edge lordy. Yeah, very <laughs> edge lordy, which fits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had, must have had to put a lot of makeup on him to cover up all the Jesus didn't tap uh, tattoos on his arms. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um yeah, this trailer's not very good. Um I just it made everything that I was worried about with this project, it really brought it to light. And a very dim light. And it was <laughs> yeah, a very dim light, uh and very grainy and very desaturated. I think one of the biggest things I have a problem with is that there was no there was not a single original shot in this trailer. You can there are references, it's like reference points to other better films in almost every scene in this trailer breakfast club the first spider-man movie with toby Maguire. in fact that whole scene in the bathroom where jason accidentally punches his sink in half is almost shot for shot Spider spider-man one when when peter parker realizes that he woke up and is all of a sudden kind of ripped iron man bits there are bits from chronicle which dean israelite was the director of mm-hmm and also Max Landis wrote, which he also got his stinky hands on this. Yeah, he got his stink palm all over this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it just, I don't know. I guess what I'm worried about is there are an awful lot of people out there that saw this trailer and went, yes, this is exactly the Power Rangers that I want, that I've always wanted. And, you know, I don't want to, yeah, you know, I don't want to tell people how to do their thing. I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. This is, if it's for them, it's for them, you know? <laughs> I don't, <laughs> but I just, it's just. It's not Power Rangers. No. It's really not. And I don't I don't understand taking something that was for kids and taking it away from kids. Yeah, this movie is not for children. No. By judging by this, well, what this is, it is a cash grab for the twenty somethings and thirty yeah. somethings that it is a hundred percent playing on nostalgia. Yeah. One hundred percent. One thousand percent. Like Hence why you have the, the Power Rangers rift in there. Yeah. Yeah, it, and judging by the tone of this, I don't know how Alpha 5 is going to fit in. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to explain Zordon and make him uh, compelling in any way whatsoever. And I mean, not a joke? 
and and not like some weird alien thing like mm. i can see them having zordon be like a weird like cg holographic head holograph well just not even like a human looking head just like a big like alien yeah thing or maybe it'll be like maybe more like a digitized face kind of like um uh, oh shoot! What was the ro- what was the computer's name in Tron? Um, Master of Control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's gonna be that's gonna be an alien crash site, mm-hmm. and he's going to be an alien um, artificial intelligence, like uh, well, like in Batman v Superman in the crashed uh, Kryptonian ship. Oh there's that, yeah, yeah. That's what it's gonna be. That's yeah. what Zordon's gonna be. Either that or an Abin Sur situation where he is a dying alien that gives that gives them the power so it's gonna be like godzilla and brian cranston is gonna be in it for five minutes yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah uh man those man those trailers were real misleading <laughs> they man, were incredibly I, misleading I mean, don't get me wrong i like the movie but man was that misleading yeah i still really like that godzilla yeah i did too but it brian cranston was in it for maybe 10 minutes yeah yeah all told anyway but uh he was dead by the first 30 minutes yeah. Well, yeah, he was you gone. You came gone. to see Godzilla. Anyway. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, then you could have walked in at the last half hour. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of Godzilla either. No, I mean. no. <laughs> a, lot, no. a lot of Quicksilver and uh, uh, Scarlet Witch, <laughs> which is weird because they played a married couple in Godzilla and played brother and sister in <laughs> in Age of Ultron. Yeah. Yeah. Wrap your head around that one. But no, it's not our Power Rangers and. It's not. I got I'm tr- and I'm trying not to sound like an old fuddy duddy, but I feel like this is this is the the D, the Warner Brothers DC version of this for us. Yes. Yeah. Here it's not that it's not for us because I am secure in the enough in the fact that not everything has to be for me that there that things need to be updated and there's no way that I would actually if they would have taken it one for one from the TV show. There's no way that version of Power Rangers would work on oh, the yeah, big screen. Oh, yeah, it, it would be really they dumb. They <laughs> tried it, and it was Power Rangers the movie with Ivan Ooze, and it was terrible. It wouldn't <laughs> work. So it needed updating. They could have done the comics. The comics are the com- good. The comics are very good. But it's not that it's not for me. It's that the what they are putting out and labeling Power Rangers is almost completely unrecognizable. And yeah. that the that the majority of people out there are more than happy to accept that. That we have a production company that does not care about their source material is embarrassed by their source material. Again, this is a this is a Warner Brothers thing all over again. Warner Brothers, we've said over and over, is embarrassed of the comic roots of their franchises. Of their franchises, uh, Lionsgate in this case, or Legendary, Legendary, is embarrassed by the goofy nature of Power Rangers. That's what where most of the charm for the characters come from. So I just don't. I just don't get it. I, why Why go to all this trouble to make a Power Rangers movie and then not make it Power Rangers? And, and make Chronicle with aliens. Make Chronicle <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, Chronicle Iron Man. Oh, and the fact Breakfast that the Saban Club. is directly connected to it. Oh, Saban's just getting a check. I that's know, and is. I think that's all you ever cared about. That's all Haim Saban cares about is money. I mean, look at Chroma Squad. Like, I mean, half, yeah. half, half of what they of what the um, uh, Beyond Studios makes from Chroma Squad, which was based on the Japanese Super Sentai, not on Power Rangers. Half of, because it's close enough and Saban threw enough lawyers at them because he can afford it, half of what they make from that game has to go to Saban. Ugh. It's not just that saying inf- inspired by Saban's Power Rangers, which which again, it wasn't. <laughs> All Saban cares about is money. That's the thing. He's made such a fortune of a pop culture icon that's not e- it's not even original. No, it's all stolen from Japanese. Not shows. stolen. Well, not stolen. I mean, I mean it's licensed. legally licensed, but yeah, yeah. Half of the footage in the episodes are not even. F- they don't even film it. It's it's kind of genius. It oh, is. Yeah, it, it absolutely. Is. It's also an idea Stan Lee had back in the uh, um, mid '80s. If if have I ever told you about that? I think so. Yeah, Stan Lee had an idea for Power Rangers. About 10 years before Power Rangers came out. In 1983, there was an article written. It was back when Marvel Studios Studios was still tied in with Toei producing Super Sentai. Yeah, they, with the Japanese Spider-Man and w- stuff like it that. It started with Japanese Spider-Man. They were they actually had a share of uh, uh, Battle Fever J and the first next couple seasons after that, including a show called Sun Vulcan, which was three characters. And there was an art- article, you can actually find it online, uh, that Stan Lee was interviewed about it, and he said, I have this great idea. Jap- Japan, they have this show 
with these superheroes that's already made. What we do, we shoot some surrounding shots with American actors and we market it to kids. <laughs> he, Stan Lee cr- thought of Power Rangers 10 years prior to Power Rangers. So it's not even an original concept. It wasn't an original concept. <laughs> And then if, if also um, there was a USA show called Night Flights that was uh, kind of a, a comedy spoof kind of show. And one of the things they did was they took was it Dynaman, I think. I think it was a show called Dynaman. And they um, uh, overdubbed it with jokes. <laughs> well, if you, okay, you want to go with that one, then look at um, um, Hey There, Tiger Lily. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's basically the same. It's basically the same yeah, thing. It yeah. was a Japanese spy movie overdone with jokes yeah well i mean if you want to go all the way back the first godzilla where they inserted raymond burr yeah listen we're, we're losing sight of the, <laughs> we're losing sight of the topic here but this power Rangers way. movie doesn't look good and did you guys notice on the the posters that they also released um the posters actually look kind of nice because they actually have some color to them this look it looks like they they saturated the colors of the suits a little bit so that's kind of cool um did you notice that they uh pushed the uh release date of the movie back about two months oh no yeah, it was supposed to be released in uh, January 2017. All the posters say March now. Huh. They'd make a big deal out of it, and it didn't make a then you know stir up any waves. But it was sure enough, it's there. I'll bet if uh, if you really loved Suicide Squad and believe that Rotten Tomatoes is a huge conspiracy, you're going to you're love gonna Power like, yeah. Rangers. You're, this movie is going to be right up your alley. Okay, here's the thing. You ding dong. Okay, we got to move on, but I want to <laughs> I want to leave you guys with this thought. About a year ago, uh. Avi Shankar, I think his name is, uh, yeah. made the guy makes a bunch of YouTube short films. He made a short film that we covered called Power Slash Rangers. Yeah. And it was a super gritty, super hyper-realistic. With uh, Katie Sackhoff in it. Katie Sackhoff and um, um, Dawson from Dawson's yeah. Creek, whatever his name is. James Vanderbeek. Yeah. Playing evil Rocky because no one took Rocky seriously. Because to hell with Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway... That was, at the time, until they, uh, that was a super gritty take on it. And uh, the guy who directed it eventually came out and said, this is a parody. This is a parody of what what people would do with Power Rangers, given their the chance. They would make a super hyper-violent, hyper-realistic, god-awful version. We were making fun of that. And then Lionsgate turned around and made almost the exact same thing. <laughs> It is life imitating art. Yeah. In this case, whatever happened to that project that had a uh, the dude playing Zed working on it? Oh, the order. Yeah. The, no, 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 no. The actual Power Rangers project he was working on. You know, I haven't I haven't seen anything. I follow um, Robert Axelrod on uh, on Twitter. Yeah, he was supposed to be doing like a Power Rangers fan thing where it follows like Zed stuck on Earth or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like post uh, yeah. post war Zed. Um, yeah, no, I haven't seen anything about it. But yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to look into that. I know the I, order's I, working. They're I remember that. there was like a trailer like a long time ago with yeah. him like looking like a hobo with the staff. Yeah. Doing the voice. Well, it was it was an actor playing someone as Zed with yeah. Axelrod as the voice because Axelrod, he doesn't move around too well these days, no. unfortunately. Have you seen him yeah. lately? Yeah, he's not doing too hot. But did you know he was also the voice of Finster? Fun yes. fact. Yeah. Huh. Fun fact. Uh, anyway, we got to move on because we spent almost a half hour talking about a two minute trailer for a movie that no one likes. Uh, not true. we're passionate. We not true. Like. We're, yeah, we that like. we don't like, I guess. We're, we're passionate about the source material. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, there are a few things that popped up, uh, out of, um, New York Comic Con. Mostly it was, you know, it's just a Comic Con. Yeah. But, uh, they had a panel, uh, about the Netflix Defender series, which is the tie-in series that ties in all of their Marvel shows together. Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Daredevil, Daredevil, Jessica, Jessica Jones. Jones. Yeah. And uh, they announced the major antagonist for that series is be- going to be played by Sigourney Weaver. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. She's I'm scary. in. Throw yeah. her in all the things. Yeah. This I- was great. I wish they would have saved her for an actual Marvel movie. Yeah. Because I think <laughs> her acting her her presence would would necessitate that but you never know she might pop up in the, in the movies you know oh, yeah. but we don't know who she's going to be i have heard rumor that um the major fl- um the major thrust of the defenders is um the the time uh daredevil got possessed by a, a demon and became leader of the hand ninjas oh yeah, yeah yeah and that sigourney weaver is like a human like 
iteration of that demon demon that possesses Daredevil. So it'd be Daredevil versus the other defenders, basically. Mm, or at least for part of it. Or at least for part of it. Yeah. Okay. But no, that's cool. I'm into it. There's oh. also a trailer for Iron Fist, and it looks pretty good. I yeah. still think that guy looks like the dude from that 70s show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it bad before they cast Iron Fist in season two of Daredevil when they... Did you finish season two of Daredevil? No. Uh, Go ahead. Anyway, they save a bunch of people from the hand mm-hmm. that were like being bled out. Mm-hmm. And there was a dude with long hair, and I never caught his name, but I thought he was going to be Danny. Oh, I mean, they could have teased it. I don't think no, they did. No, they didn't. If anything, they teased it more in season one of Daredevil because the uh, the drugs that they were selling had the Steel Serpent logo yeah. printed on it, which is like the evil, is like the bizarro Iron Fist. Yeah. Um, okay, anyway, uh, moving on. So the Mulan movie, live action movie, is not going to have uh, white people in it, and that's good. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's Mulan. Yeah. Well, there that's was a real weird way to word it. Well, <laughs> it is, but there was. It's Mulan. An, Why? Art- an article had come out supposedly that someone had looked at the script and said there was going to be like a, a basically a white love interest. A, a white, a white, a what? How it was quoted? A white savior character, kind of yeah. like, kind of like the John Smith character in Pocahontas. Yeah, or or Brad Pitt in The Great Wall or whatever. Um, the Last Samurai. Yeah, exactly. And people were losing their minds about it. But then they said, or Disney came out and said, it's like, look, it's not going to be that way. We're, we're, we are pushing for an all Asian cast. And that's the way it needs to be yeah. because it's Mulan. Yeah. There were, there was only Asian characters in the animated one. So why yeah. would you change that? Also why? the fact that it is a, 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 it is a Chinese story. I yeah. mean, it's their thing. Yeah, wh- look at the the stuff. I I I look at the guff that the Ghost in the Shell movie is getting over having white actor actors uh, and actresses playing Gods of Egypt. A uh, Gods of Egypt. Oh man, that's an even better. That's an even better one. But yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Cast- I mean, here and here's the thing with like uh with with Disney. They're they're they've here real recently become real um. The, woke oh yeah uh, to to like like culture cultural diversity and like cultural like synergy like look at their their new movie it's coming out in around thanksgiving um moana moana yeah the fact they actually got a polynesian uh actress to voice the character she basically is that character yeah she she, she looks yeah, she yeah. her character was modeled after yeah. yeah and the rock who is samoan yeah is you know maui so it's they are. They, look at Zootopia had a very progressive message too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they they get it. Disney's yeah, Disney gets it, and this is just a continuation of Disney getting it and saying, "Hey, don't worry about it." Yeah, <laughs> man, it's a shame that that Ghost in the Shell looks really, really good. It, I feel bad about how good it looks. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm gonna go see it. Oh, I will too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm gonna feel I'm just gonna hate myself the entire time. <laughs> yeah, I'll feel bad about it, but I it it looks really good. It cool. looks really good. Scarlett Johansson, you know. She's a good actress. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I do I do love Scarlett Johansson. Into it, yeah. I mean I'll watch it. Yeah, like you said, I'll probably hate myself for it. <laughs> oh, and last thing for the show, uh if you have a Galaxy Note seven, this is tech news. Yeah. Uh, get rid of it. Yeah, throw. Go to the. Don't throw it in the trash because it'll probably combust the trash. It yeah. will blow up your trash can. Yeah, they just keep exploding the battery. They can't figure out those batteries. Even the replacements have been exploding. Um, one apparently caught fire on a plane. Oh god. Oh wow. Yeah. Can you imagine someone using like a Google cardboard thing oh, up yeah. next oh. to your face? Actually, yeah. <laughs> Oculus turned off the Galaxy Note Seven for use with Gear VR. Because don't put an exploding phone next to your face. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, Samsung has decided to uh, halt production. They're, they've they completely stopped. They are pulling it completely. And they are urging everyone to go, if you have a Galaxy Note 7, take it back. Take it and exchange it for something else. Go get an iPhone. Uh, not a 7, though, <laughs> because those have been kind of exploding, too. Really? Yes. Not as not as many, but there have been cases of the battery getting so hot that it does like a pop. I think it's uh, about time to move ahead in battery technology a little bit. I, I agree. Uh, yeah. Kind of hit I... the ceiling on what I we mean, got. Even, even, even my phone gets a little warm sometimes. Oh, mine does too. 
So, but uh, like one time, I remember I was playing Pokemon Go and I had it in my pocket. and I was walking and my pocket got real hot. Yeah, I was like, <clears throat> that's not good. Well, have you ever had the air come up? That's like your phone's too hot. Yep, I do that sometimes. I get um, that. It happened to me once, uh, but mostly because my phone was sitting in the sun. Yeah, that'll do it. Too. Yeah, my, I was I was on a bike uh, a bike tour, and yeah, I had to finish uh, the last five miles without any music. Oof. That was yeah. That was a yeah. real, that was a real bike dirge. Let me tell you. <laughs> Good yeah, times. Uh, but yeah, if you are a, and this is not a slight against you know Android you know OS phones or anything, but yeah, if you have a Gal- Galaxy Note Seven, it is dangerous. Yeah, trade them in. Yeah, this is a public service announcement. <laughs> yeah. Listen to your pals at Nerd Overload. We know what's up. <laughs> have you seen that meme where a picture is of Two Face from The Dark Knight? Yes, He's I have. Like, I am. I'm here to trade in my Note Seven. Yeah, that's really good. That's a, that's a good joke. Uh, they modded into Grand Theft Auto Five or one of the Grand Theft Autos the phone that has like a proximity mine that you can plan <laughs> on things. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's good. That's really good. All right. Well, hey, I think that's it for the week. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Hey, guess what? We didn't talk about Pokemon this week. Hey, we didn't. Congratulations. Except for right now, we're talking about Pokemon. Yeah, well, right there now. wasn't we any news. It. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, there kind of was, but like we're not going to get into it. Anyway, let's uh, uh, let's get out of here. You've been listening to Nerd Overload. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You can also find us at Facebook at facebook.com forward slash nerdoverloadradio. Email. We have oh, an God. email at staff at nerdoverload.com. You can tweet at us uh, at nerd underscore overload and follow our YouTube channel where you can also watch the show or watch the show. I guess you're watching it. You can watch YouTube. it. Yeah. Uh, nerd overload TV. Yep. And we are on iTunes and Stitcher and uh, I think we're on the Google play store. I think. I don't know. We're... I don't No one uses it. Put but... nerd overload into your computer and you'll see all kinds of stuff that we've done. Oh yeah. But we're, we are. Yeah. We're yeah. everywhere. The yeah. Google is swole with nerd overload content, let me tell you. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, thanks again for tuning in, and we will be back next week. Peace out. This show was sponsored in part by Warp Zone Video Games and Beyond.